Hello everyone. Several weeks ago we spoke about goal planning and we've also spoken a lot about sharing and accountability and it's in the spirit of those two things that I wanted to share with you a new way of goal planning that I've developed for myself. When we spoke about it I realised that I did write down all of my goals but almost always I would not follow them. And one reason for that is they would end up in a book on a shelf somewhere and I wouldn't look at them. Another reason is things would just change throughout the year. 2020 is a prime example of that and they would just get out of date. And so while I had goals, probably for the last 10 or 15 years, I never really followed or used them properly. And we spoke about how important it was to have goals, but if you have them and don't use them, it's almost as if you don't have them. So I thought I'd make a, a goal planning method that was a lot more robust for myself. Uh, and robust here for me means that it needs to stay up to date no matter what happens. So I might start working on new projects halfway through the year. Uh, a global pandemic might hit and I might not have access to recording studios, so I wanna, wanna move goals around, this sort of thing. And it needs to stay up to date for that. And I think I've done that now. And what I've realized is when, when it comes to goal planning, there's kind of two aspects to it. You have, first of all, uh, a commitment side. I am gonna do this by the end of the year. And that's very valuable for the accountability. But as I said, it doesn't really work too well for me that because if I lose access to recording studios, it just means the, the goal, the commitment is no longer that relevant. Uh, and so I need to change it. Uh, so for me, the commitment side works really well on a short term basis. So one day, one week, maybe up to a month. It's extremely valuable. But for me, a, a year long commitment is not very useful when it comes to projects because there's too many unknowns. The other side to goal planning, I think, is an outline and a plan. It's keeping things in view and it's working out what you can practically do and what order to do things in. And that's really the side I've, worked, I've focused in on for my yearly plan here. So what I've done is I've laid out all of the projects that I want to work on. And then along the top, I have the dates. So each one of these columns is a single month. And you can see that each of these three month periods is broken into quarters and color coded. So I'm going to work from the top down on projects and it says in December I should be able to complete well these two projects and this project will shift over into January. And then within January I can complete these and then the waterfall sort of keeps going down. And so you can see that by the end of July I should be able to complete all of these projects, if nothing changes that is. But the benefit of this is things can change. For example, let's say I came up with a brand new project that I really wanted to work on. I could enter a new project here and I could give it a category of YouTube and it will change its color to red and then I give it an hours estimate. So let's say it's a really big project. Let's say it's going to take me 200 hours and then I'm going to give it a, a category, a priority of one and I'm going to shift it up to the top. So there's the new project. So if I was working on that new project, it was going to take me about three months to complete it. And that means that everything else has been shifted along by three months. Now, this is really useful for me because one of the issues I suffer with is a new shiny object syndrome, where whenever I get, come up with a new project or idea, I jump straight into it and start working on it. And then about 50 hours in, I realize how much it's disrupting everything else. And I, I put it on one side and shelve it and go back to doing what I was working on. And that's really counterproductive because it means I lose the work that I have done. I start forgetting about it. Where did I get up to, etc. And it delays everything else. And it's a real mess. So one of the big values of this is I can see immediately the impact of working on this project. This, this goal planner is, um, is completely forgiving. It doesn't judge me in the sense that if I don't do anything for three months, it'll look exactly the same and it won't say that I'm behind necessarily. But it's also it doesn't sugarcoat anything either. I now know that this project here is going to take three months and it's going to push everything else back three months. So with that in mind, instead of jumping straight into that, I might say I want to move it further down the list. Let's say I want to get all of these projects done first. And to do that, I'll just give it a, a lower priority here on the right. If I give it a priority of four, and I can reorder the list and it'll move down into this group four down here. And you can see each group is automatically sort of separated by these lines. Uh, the borders here. And that's far better now because I, I can come up with new projects and I can stick them on the list so I don't forget about them. I can estimate how many hours they're going to take and I can work out when in the year approximately they're going to be finished 
uh, and what order I should do them in. Um, now, when it comes to the number of hours that I'm actually working on, I said it was going to take me 200 hours of focused work to do that. At the top here, I have how many hours I expect to work each week and how much of that time will be focused on these projects as opposed to doing overhead like taxes or whatever. So at the moment, I have 30 hours a week. Uh, and that might not sound like too much, but that's 30 hours sustained throughout the year. So, for example, over Christmas, I might take a week off and that will damage the average quite a lot. It's also uh, focused work. So when I was working in an office, I might be in for 40 hours a week, but I probably was only doing 20 hours, if that, of focused work. Uh, so that's that's what this number is. Enough of me defending my work ethic there. If I was to increase that, let's say I'm going to be able to do 40 hours a week, we can see the effect it has on all of this uh, waterfall process. It should shift everything to the left. Everything comes along to the left. And I could also change how much time I spent on my focus tasks. If that was up to, uh, say, 90 percent, everything would continue to shift to the left. Um, and so this is really useful um, for getting an idea of how much I'm actually able to work. Uh, I know how much I can work because I record every hour I work in the uh, little app that I shared a while ago on my phone. Uh, but it's also good for motivating me to do more. Um, so at the moment, I think 30 hours and about 80% is, is a reasonable estimate throughout the year to sustain. So that's what I've kept it on. But I might change it throughout the year. Um, now, there's one final thing. Oh, actually, before we do that, I'll just say this stays up to date in the fact that if I was to do nothing for all of December here, absolutely nothing, the beginning of next month, all of these months would update and everything would shift along. So you can see all of the coloured brackets have moved along because, because we've moved along one month, but nothing has been completed, so everything stays where it is. What that means is this is not saying that I will finish this new project by October. What it's saying is I will finish this new project by this many months from where I am now. So things only change when I actually do work on it. So this is less of a, of a, a goal and more of an outline of where you will expect to be in several months if you carry on working at this rate, uh, which is why I say it's quite forgiving. You can take three months off and the plan won't need to, to, to be changed. It won't be out of date, anything like that. It'll just carry on, uh, which is perfect for me because one of the issues I had with goal planning was I would write out the goals and they would become out of date and I would need to update them. So I'd throw away that bit of paper and write a new bit of paper and blah, blah, blah. And it would just, it would never get done. I don't want to have a big overhead in actually writing out my plan because it, it defeats the point. It makes me less productive rather than more productive. Now, with that in mind, nor do I want to have to write in this a lot to keep it updated. So as I said, this is all based upon how many hours I'm working and how long the project is. But I need to keep track of how much I have actually worked. So on the right here, we have how many hours the project's going to take, how many hours work I've done on it, and what's left. But I don't want to have to write this in manually every week and keep track of it myself. So as I said, I was using that app to record. Whenever I start working on uh, a recording session or an editing session, anything like that, I press the start button and then I stop it when I finish. And I have a button here which will import all of that data in and hopefully give me a reduced time left and then shift everything along based upon that number. So if I hit this button now, any moment there we go you can see it's brought new hours worked in and it shifted everything else along so now it says that within this month i can actually complete up to up to here and i should make a start on this Masonius rufus audiobook as well uh, one final thing you can see it's actually gone a little bit over the estimate there uh, so obviously my estimate was a little bit low i could increase that if i wanted to uh, just to say i've still got a few hours left to work on that uh, but it's more or less done that project uh, the final thing is, if I wanted to just tick off a project as done, I could put a number one on here and it would cross it off and it would shift everything else done. So even if I didn't have any hours worked, I could, uh, I could pick something like this course and just say it's done already and it would shift everything else done. Uh, I think that's, that's everything that I wanted to share. Uh, I'm going to consult this at the beginning of every month and work out what I need to do for the month and then adjust my weekly plans, which are on a bit of paper, accordingly. Thank you for your attention.